You are ready for me, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know if there was something else in between here and I couldn't remember. Sorry. <laughs> All your smiling faces today. Gosh. Um, so I have uh, some other song lyrics uh, for you this morning. Um, I'm not singing them. I know that you that would not be a good thing. Uh, but these lyrics I'm going to say to you are by um, Cherise Patron. And she's a new thought. I think I said it that way, the right way. She's a new thought uh, songwriter and she's a singer and stuff. And, and I just thought that they're a good way for us to uh, start the lesson today. So the words go like this. I'm going to be big. I'm going to be big for God. I'm going to speak out. I'm going to speak out for love. I'm going to shine bright until the whole world sees the light. I'm going to shine bright. I'm going to speak out. I'm going to be big for God. I'm going to live loud, a life with no regrets. I'm going to go now because now is all we get. I'm going to break free to live in perfect harmony. I'm going to break free. I'm going to go now. I'm going to live loud for God. I'm going to say yes to my good right now. I'm going to let go of all my fear and doubt. I'm going to go forth and bring a change about. I'm going to go forth. I'm going to let go. I'm going to say yes to God. I'm going to break free. I'm going to go now. I'm going to live big for God. I'm going to shine bright. I'm going to speak out. I'm going to be big for God. I'm going to shine bright. I'm going to speak out. I'm going to be big for God. Isn't that a cool song? I share these lyrics with you this morning because if we are to go deep and to rise high, to go deep into who and whose we are, and by going deep into who we are, rising higher in consciousness than ever before, then some action is required. And that action that's required is like speaking out for love, breaking free of fear and doubt, saying yes to our good, living in harmony and being a catalyst for change. And, you know, not just think that we might do that, some, some of it, in, in like a little small way, but to go like full tilt out, you know, just full tilt in big, big, big ways. So this morning to remind us of how our unity teachings invite us instruct us, inspire us, and infuse us with enthusiasm to go deep and rise high. Um, I want to just remind us how they do that. And our teachings invite us into going deep and rising high by calling us, by calling us, like nudging us. And our teachings instruct us exactly and precisely how to move into that deeper place and higher space. It's like a step-to-step, step-by-step how-to manual. Our teachings really are like that. And our teachings inspire us, motivate us to want to go there, to go high, to go in, in consciousness. And last but not least, our teachings infuse us with enthusiasm for the entire idea of living that deeper, larger, more profound, more of an on-purpose, higher, bigger way, which then gives us the fortitude to keep moving forth even when life doesn't go as we planned, even when we get disappointed, when we get scared or frustrated or have a year like 2020. 
So I have a, a cartoon I want to read to you. This was, I love cartoons. That's the first thing I read in the paper. And so last Sunday's was really, uh, really a good one. It was the pearls before swine. Anybody else read that? Read those cartoons? Well, the beginning of it says, visit Tucson this spring. It's a little pamphlet. And the pig says to the mouse, look at this, another travel brochure, like we could even travel anywhere in the near future. And then the mouse says, yeah, true, but aren't they saying we might be able to get the vaccine by then? And the pig says, yeah, I think they are. And the mouse says, so maybe, so this maybe could possibly be a thing. And the pig says, well, I guess it could. And the mouse says, wait a minute, you mean we're both having, and then together they say, an optimistic thought. And then the mouse says, so that's what that feels like. And the pig said, I actually said future. Isn't that cute? Then Carolyn Hack said, being negative is easy. There will always be a downside to every good, a hurdle to everything desirable, a con to every pro. The real courage is finding the good in what you have, the opportunities in every hurdle, the pros in every con. So did any of you resonate with either the cartoon or the quote? Or both maybe? What a wild ride we've been on this past year. Someone once told me that living our unity teachings, simple as they appear, inspiring as they are, inviting as they are, infusing, instructing as they are, are not easy. And it's been my experience this past year that living and modeling our teachings has been very difficult at times. It's been difficult at times to let go of the fear of the virus, to remember that I can't even let, I can't even see people except like on Zoom, let alone hug them. And then I have to wash my hands all the time and not touch my face. But there's been some really positive things, uh, wondrous things like, grocery shopping online with delivery right to the door. I may never shop again. I love it. And especially I may never shop again if I could convince the delivery person to come inside and put them away, the groceries away. That would even be better. But really ordering online is super, super awesome. You know, our dogs don't even bark at the Amazon person anymore. They consider them friends. You know, they come so often. And even though they're wearing masks, the dogs recognize them. But seriously now, I believe that life for almost a year now has been inviting us to go deep and to rise high, to go deep within, to touch in often to who we are and to rise higher and higher in consciousness, to respond and recognize that we are expressions of the Christ and that we can live from that Christ consciousness in freedom, big for God. So the question for all of us is, are we willing to accept the invitation 
Are we willing to go deep within and then to rise in consciousness, to use our teachings, our truth, to be big as expressions of God for God? We each get to answer that for ourselves. We can't answer it for each other. So if you answer yes, then the next questions are these. What qualities of God are you being called to expand into? What are you being, how are you being called to play bigger? What does your grander, bigger experience of life look like? What is calling you deeper? What is calling you to rise higher? How will you speak out for love? How will you shine your light more brightly? Live without regrets. Break fear of, free of fear and doubt. How will you say yes in a more pro profound way for your good? And how will you live in greater harmony? and be a catalyst for change. It's a new year. And this new year has an opportunity for all of us to answer the call to come up higher and to express more of who we are, to show up in ways that help heal the planet. It's time. And it's time now, not when we get vaccinated, but now. Because inner work doesn't require the vaccine. The Russian poet Rumi said, free yourself or feel yourself being quietly drawn by the deeper pull of what you truly love. And in the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, this, it's said in this way, in, in verses 18 and 19, do you not remember the former things or con do not remember the former things or consider the things of old? Behold, I will do a new thing, a new thing. It shall spring forth and you shall know it. So no matter what has gone on this past year, or even years past then, past last year, this is a new time, a time to go deep within and to rise higher and, and high, to higher and higher levels of expression, to be more and more aware of the powerful beings that we are. See, I believe it's our responsibility to RSVP, yes, to the invitation to go deep and to rise high. And we can do that easily, willingly, or not. Most of us know that sometimes the invitation gets delivered as a pull and sometimes as a push. Maybe a silent tap on the shoulder, or perhaps a gentle nudge of the heart. Or it may be delivered as a swift kick in the behind, or a two by four right over the head. And those last two usually are after we haven't responded to the tap or the nudge. Anybody experience that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Recently, I read a story by uh, uh, Father Leo Booth, and he told of a trip that he was taking to Bali for a spiritual conference. And I think he was participating and giving it. And when he arrived at the British airport, 
uh, to check in, he was told that his passport had only four months left and that it needed six months on it to be legitimate. So the agent that was waiting on him suggested that he stop over in Singapore and get his passport renewed at the British Embassy there before he went on to his conference in Bali. But they also said that the process would take several days and uh, but that was the best they could do. That was the best they could offer him at the time. So needless to say, he was not a happy camper. He, uh, he had to be in Bali for that conference. And so he sat down, he was all hot under the collar. He was just fretting and stewing and he went and sat down. And, and while he was sitting there trying to, you know, just, just being upset, really, he was sitting there. A lady got up from her seat and went into the restroom. And when this lady came out, he noticed that her skirt was caught up in her underwear. And she didn't know it, right? And uh, he, he referred to this later as a spiritual moment. And he's thinking to himself, what should I do? You know, what should I tell her? He toyed with the idea of just pulling her skirt down, you know, and pulling it out, but then he thought maybe he shouldn't do that. So um, it said he said, uh, ma'am, excuse me, but your skirt is stuck in your underwear. And she just went, oh dear, I hate it when it ha that happens, when I do something like that. And then he told her that he really thought it was better for him to tell her that. And so she replied, well, thank you so much. He, she said to him, I detect an accent are you from England? And he said, yeah, I am. Um, and, uh, and she said that she was too, and, and that, that she lives in Singapore. And he said to her, well, what do you do in Singapore? <laughs> so are you ready for her answer? Yes, she said, I work for the British embassy in the passport division. <laughs> So within a day, he had his passport renewed and he was on his way to Bali for his conference. So this example of a nudge to handle a situation in a higher way is a real mild one, but it's kind of cute, I thought. But sometimes life puts us in a situation like Father Booth, Father Leo, decision to make. Now he could have been so caught up in his stew and his worry and that he wasn't even aware that he could be in service to someone. But sometimes we can be in disagreement with a friend or a family member and so determined that we are right and they are wrong that we can't go deep and rise higher we can we can can search our hearts for our truth or have empathy for theirs or we've tried so hard to make the right choices on how to spend our money or our time that going deeper and rising higher isn't even considered. And there are times that it's difficult to recognize or even realize, to have the awareness that we are so much more than this human experience. Sometimes we are fretting and we're stewing and anxious and afraid and whining. Anyone have a pity party lately? Some kind of meltdown? Yeah, I have, I have. And when that happens, we forget to surrender to the moment. We forget to ask for guidance. And many people experiencing the year 2020 and all it contained 
have gone into overwhelm and aren't able to see the light at the end of the tunnel as anything other than a Mack truck. But there's good news. And the good news for all of us, wherever we are, is God is in the midst of everything and everyone. God, goodness, is tapping from within, nudging, whispering in our hearts, saying, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here to help you express me in greater ways than you ever dreamed possible. I'm here to help you forgive. I'm here to help you rebuild, to renew, to heal. I'm here propelling you to sprout wings and fly. I'm here. I'm here. Don't be afraid. I'm here to guide you, to prosper you, to direct you. I am peace. I am wisdom, love, and acceptance, and joy. I am freedom, power beyond measure. I am your strength, your resilience. I am within you and all around you. I live and move and have my being as you. So go deep and rise high in me. Let's accept the invitation this year to go deeper within and rise higher in consciousness and express who we are bigger than we ever thought we could. I think we kind of had a year to rest up for this since we didn't do a whole lot, right? So it's time. Michelangelo once said that the greatest danger for most of us it's not that our aim is too high and we miss it, but our aim is too low and we reach it. So let's aim high, let's aim high. I'm willing to do my best to show up for life in big ways this 2021. Will you, will you show up big? for life in 2021? Okay? So let's close our eyes and take a deep, deep breath and accept the invitation. Accept the invitation to go deeper and to rise higher, to be a bigger expression of God than ever, ever before. So surrender to that goodness of spirit. Surrender to that goodness of spirit within you. Allow the internal nudge to reveal to you how you will speak out for love. how you will shine your light brightly. Live without regrets. Break fear, free of fear and doubt. Say yes to your good.
How will you live in harmony? How will you be a catalyst for change? So commit to, over the next few days, reviewing and asking how you will do, how you will be big for God this year, how you will express it at a higher level than ever before. And now let us give thanks for all the opportunities that 2021 will bring. Let's give thanks for the guidance and for all the gifts of spirit. Let us say together, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen and amen. Thank you, Reverend Billy. That was wonderful. Such a good lesson and such a good homework assignment for all of us. Um, Before Ken uh, plays the next.